Hi, my name is Abhinav and I'm going to talk about this tool that I've been working on called matplotllm. So uh, matplotllm is a natural language interface over matplotlib, uh, which is a library I use a lot for making visualizations. Uh, it's a pretty common Python library uh, used a lot uh, everywhere where there's like need of plotting and graphing. And uh, I usually use it in reports. So whenever I'm writing a report in org mode, I tend to write a code block which is in Python and then uh, that code block has like usage of matplotlib to produce some reports. Um, that works really well but at times what happens is like I have to make a very custom uh, graph let's say and then uh, while I'm writing a report it's kind of a huge leap of abstraction when I'm working on text versus going into actual low level matplotlib code to do that graphing. So that's something I don't want to do. Uh, and uh, here's an example. So this is a graph which is, I think it was made in like five or six years back. And then um, there are some common things like scatter plot here, the dots that you can see here scatter. Then, uh, but there are a few things which uh, to do them, to make them, you'll actually have to go, at least me, I have to go to the documentation and figure out how to do it, uh, which is fine, but I don't want to do this. Um, you know, spend so much time here when I'm working on, let's say, a tight deadline for a report. So uh, that's the motivation for this tool. So this tool basically allows me to get rid of the complexity of the library by uh, working via an LLM. So an LLM is a large language model. Uh, these are models which are uh, trained to produce text, uh, generate text. And uh, just by doing that, they actually end up learning a lot of common patterns. For example, if you ask a question, you can actually get a reasonable response. Uh, if you ask it to write a code for something, you'll actually get a code which can also be very reasonable. So uh, this tool is basically a wrapper that uses an LLM. Uh, for uh, the current version, we use GPT-4, which is OpenAI's model. It's not open in the sense of, uh, you know, in the sense of open source. So that's a problem that it has. But uh, uh, for this version, we are going to use that. So uh, using this library is pretty simple. You basically require the library and then you set up your OpenAI op uh, API key here. Uh, then you get a code block uh, where you can specify the language as matplotllm. And then what you can do is you can basically describe what you want in natural language. So uh, I'll take this example of this data set. It's called um, the health and wealth of nations. I think that was the name of a visualization where it was used. So this is basically life expectancy, GDP uh, of various countries starting from 1800. And I think it goes up to 2000 somewhere. So uh, earlier I would basically, you know, try to write a code which reads this CSV and then does a lot of uh, matplotlib stuff and then finally produces a graph. Uh, but with this tool, what I will do is I'll just provide instructions in two forms. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just describe how the data looks like. So I'll say data is in a file called data.csv, which is this file, by the way, on the right. And uh, it looks like the following. So I just pasted a few uh, lines from the top, which is enough. Uh, so since it's a CSV, there's already a structure to it. But let's say if you have a log file where there's like more um, you know complexities to be parsed and all that also works out really well so you just have to describe how the data looks like uh, and uh, you know the system will figure out how to work with this now let's do the plotting so what i can do is so let's start from a very basic plot between life expectancy and gdp per capita so i'll just do this can you um, make a scatter plot for life expectancy and GDP per capita. Now uh, you you can see there are some typos and probably there will be some grammatical mistakes also coming through, but uh, that's all is that's all okay because um, the models are supposed to handle those kind of situations really well. So uh, I sent the request to the model. Uh, since it's a large model, GPT-4 is really large. It actually takes a lot of time to uh, get the response back. So this specific response took like 17 seconds, which is huge. Uh, it's not like something you would expect in a, you know, in a local file running on a computer. Uh, 
um, but I've got what I wanted, right? So there's a scatter plot here, as you can see below, and which is which is plotting what I specified it to do. And um, though it looks a little dense, so what I can do is like I can provide further instructions to uh, as like feedback, iterative feedback on this. So I can say, um, can you uh, only show points where here is the multiple of 50. So since it's starting from 1800, the data points, uh, they're like too many years. So I'll just try to uh, thin them down a little. So now what's happening in the background is that everything below this last instruction is going out as the context to the model along with the code that it wrote till now. And then this instruction is added on top of it so that it basically modifies the code to make it work according to this instruction. So as you can see now, the data points are like much fewer. So this is what I wanted also, that's, that's fine. Let's also do a few more things. Um, I want to see the progression through time. So maybe I'll do something like uh, color more recent years with a darker shade of, um, let's change the color map also. So um, now this again goes back to the model. So again, everything below before this line is the context along with the current code. And then this instruction is going to the model to make the changes. So uh, now this should happen, I guess. Uh, once this happens, yeah, so, okay. So we have this uh, new color map and there's also this change of color. And also there's like, a, you know, uh, uh, this range of color from 1800 to 2000, which is a nice addition, uh, kind of smart, I didn't expect. I didn't exactly ask for it, but it's nice. So let's do a couple more things. Uh, let's make it more minimal. Let's make it more minimal. Can you remove the bounding, bounding box? Also, um, also let's annotate a few points. So I want to annotate the point which has the highest GDP per capita. Also annotate the point with highest GDP per capita uh, with the country and year. So again, uh, forget about the grammar, uh, the language model works out well. Usually uh, it kind of takes care of all those complexities for you. So yeah, so this is what we have got uh, after that. So as you can see, there's the annotation which is here. I think it's still overlapping, so probably it could be done better, but the box is removed. Now, as you can see, uh, the system is, you will be able to see this that the system is not uh, really robust. So the GitHub repository has some examples where it's like fails miserably and you will actually have to go into the code to figure out what's happening. But we do expect that to improve slowly because the models are improving uh, greatly in performance. And this is a very general model, right? This is not even tuned for this use case. Uh, the other thing is that while I was trying to uh, provide feedback, I was still using like text here all the time, uh, but it can be made more natural. So for example, if I have to annotate this particular point, uh, I actually can, uh, you know, just point my cursor to it. So Emacs has a way to figure out where your mouse pointer is. And with that, you can actually go back into the code and then uh, see which primitive is being drawn here in matplotlib so that there's a way to do that. And then if you do that, then it's like really nice to, you know, kind of just be able to say, uh, you know, put your cursor here and then say something like, can you make this, can you annotate this point, let's say. Uh, because text is, you know, there's like, there are limitations to text. And if you're producing an image, you should be able to do that too. So I do expect that to happen soonish. Uh, if not from the model side, uh, the, the hack that I mentioned could be made to work. So that will come in, in a later version probably. Um, anyway, so that's the end of my talk. Uh, you can find more details in the repository link and, uh, thank you for listening. Yeah. Goodbye.